First day. All right. So, nuclei demo. Let's get right into it. Um, so what we're going to go over here is we're going to talk about uh, what, who Project Discovery is, because maybe you've been watching the stream and maybe you have been uh, seeing me for a little while, but uh, maybe you don't really know about Project Discovery. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the company. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the requirements you need in order to install Nuclei. We're going to actually talk about how to use it and we'll have some uh, demonstrations later. And then there's time for questions at the end, which there won't be. But like if y'all have questions, just throw them in the chat, of course. Um, so who are we? Who's Project Discovery? So Project Discovery is uh, an open source security company and we specialize in uh, identifying new and exploitable vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. And our mission is to democratize security. When I first uh, joined the team and was interviewing and was talking with Brendan, uh, he talked about how security has been uh, in a lot of ways kind of like a mystery for many people, uh, especially if you're looking at like companies and developers and stuff like that. There is a, uh, a sort of like, well, the security guys handle that and like, oh, I'm not sure what to do about security. I write the code, I make it work, does it pass the test? And then security later goes, hey, what's going on? Um, around November of last year, I was still working at GitLab um, we changed from saying just the DevOps platform to the DevSecOps platform. And to me, that was this indicator that security is becoming so important that we have to put it in the name to let people know that, yes, we do security as well. And within DevOps, the, the, the DevOps lifecycle and the different stages of the DevOps lifecycle, uh, security is towards the end. And there was this concept and idea, many of you may have heard of it, uh, called shift left. And shift left is making security <clears throat> something that you talk about earlier in the process. Don't write code, deploy code, and then think about making it secure. Write secure code first. Write tests that check for secure code. And so that idea that security is so important that we're changing the name of, of, uh, of how we market ourselves and the way that we describe what DevOps is to DevSecOps um, was a huge indicator to me as someone new to the industry. I was like, so this security is the thing, huh? So when I had the opportunity to join Brendan at a security company, I was like, this is great. This aligns with where I think the next... Uh, the next sort of like realm and the next sort of universe that we're gonna have to, uh, to to figure out and understand better is is security. I mean, think of like the vulnerabilities that have been happening lately. Think about like data breaches and stuff like that. Uh, all of that is endemic of uh, not taking security seriously until it's too late or taking security only as seriously as a um, uh, an audit says you have to. And an audit, like hackers don't care about audits, they care about getting in. So uh, Project Discovery exists as a set of tools. We have 20 tools and they're all open source and they each have very different functions in ways that they can find exploitable vulnerabilities. Now they're not used to actively exploit them, they check. You know, we have a web crawler, we, we have uh, our main tool, Nuclei, um, and we're gonna talk about that today, but like, all of our tools are designed with mostly, mostly reconnaissance in mind. The idea of finding these exploitable vulnerabilities and then uh, do the ethical thing and you report it to a bug bounty program and then they pay you. Like, I mean, what's better than getting paid for hacking someone? So Nuclei, our tool is written in Go. It is a Go engine uh, that uses YAML templates to find exploitable vulnerabilities in the web. And th those can be a variety of, of types of vulnerabilities, mostly HTTP. That's gonna be what we, we tend to do the most. Um, but uh, those YAML files are super customizable. And those templates, there's over 6,000 templates in that repository that check for CVEs, that check for known vulnerabilities. Uh, uh, there's a bunch of things that it, that it does. And today we're gonna talk about a few of those things. So this is the uh, community team. That's Brendan over here, head of community. Um, you can find him at O'Leary Crew or Brendan at projectdiscovery.io. This is me, I'm the developer community manager. 
Um, and these are some links. Nux.gg is our uh, bit.ly. Uh, we have a custom because Nux, like nuclei, nucleus, Nux is a Latin word. Never mind. Uh, but Nux.gg and then Discord, Twitter, or nuclei. These are quick links that will, will take you places where you can uh, learn more about a variety of things. But joining the Discord is pretty pretty easy. Uh, let's go ahead and throw that in there. Nux.gg slash Discord. Discord. Um, but if you, you know click that, join our... Uh, join our Discord, hang out, and chat with other bug bounty hunters. So, uh, by the end of this demo, you're going to be able to install Nuclei. You're going to be able to run it on a single target or a list of targets. I can show you how to use it as uh, with a list. Um, and you'll be able to describe its usefulness in attack service management. And then hopefully, you'll be able to tell other people about Nuclei as well. I think that would be fantastic. All right, so... What do we do first? So first off, you have to have Go 1.19 or greater installed um, because you use a Go install command to grab uh, Nuclei. Um, this works on Linux or Windows. Um, um, certainly you could probably do it on a Mac, but uh, most people are going to be using Linux or Windows. Um, but the whole uh, 1.19 or greater, I think we're on 1.21 for Go now. Um, as long as you have at least 1.19, you're fine. But it's just go install dash v and then uh, github.com slash project discovery slash nuclei v2 command nuclei at latest. And that pulls uh, the latest version of nuclei down and installs it. Now, this is the part where uh, people sometimes start to have a little bit of like a um, an issue. We get people who uh, uh, will show up in Discord or show up on GitHub and say, hey, um, this is a little weird. I can't, you know, it's installed and it worked, but uh, I'm not able to use it for some reason. And the first thing we say is always, hey, check your path. Um, and I have a video specifically about installing Nuclei on Linux. Um, that's the first one. That's our getting started video. Uh, and then you'll see a link uh, once you do that one for getting started too. That talks about some common issues. Um, if you want more than just Nuclei, if you want all the tools, then get PDTM, that's the Project Discovery Tool Manager. And that's also nux.gg slash PDTM. Uh, and that downloads, or rather that's the tool manager that lets you download all 20 of your tools and it lets you update them and, and keep them installed and all that good stuff. Um, so we're gonna be running through this, assuming that we've already got this all taken care of. And we're going to go ahead and start using Nuclei. Well, rather, we're going to talk about it first. So these Nuclei templates that exist, uh, they're written in YAML. Um, and YAML is uh, a markup language that uh, uh, lets you denote sort of like uh, some commands and a little bit of scripting. But mostly it's like, hey, do this, do this, do this. And the engine reads that and does it. These are largely community written. Um, uh, it, it's got some, uh, we're going to go over the, the structure of a template later and, and what's in a template. Um, but uh, the fact that it's largely community written is something that we're really proud of because that means we get quick solutions. Um, and that means that we're getting YAML templates that are being written for the community that are for very specific needs. And then on top of that, let's say you've got a specific need that isn't addressed by a template that we have in our repository. Uh, you can write one and we actually have a template editor that I'll talk about um, at the end of this uh, uh, that helps you write them and gives you uh, kind of like a neat little SaaS like platform where you can like write templates and look at other templates and there's a little AI in there as well because everyone's got AI now uh, but we think it's really useful really cool um, but yeah, uh, you run what you want to run and you can filter these templates by tag, severity, directory. There's a bunch of ways that you can filter the templates because you don't want to run 6,000 templates every time you're trying to check for vulnerabilities. You want to run the ones that matter to you and you want to get the results that matter to you because it's hard to sift through all that data otherwise. So there's a couple uh, pieces to a template. And uh, we'll have an example after this, but we'll talk about uh, what these are real quick. There's metadata, which is very, very important to organizing these templates. There's an ID, name, author, tags, and severity of, of the, uh, the exploitation. Ooh, excuse me. Um, 
that metadata allows us to to group them by um uh by technology by uh tag by severity so let's say you only want the log 4j uh templates then those that's tagged and you can pull them by tags uh you only want critical you can pull it by severity uh you only want author you only want the ones written by you filter by author uh the ne next part of a template uh it, it dictates what the protocol being used is uh you can do it on a file dns http tcp ssl websocket again http is like the most popular one but these other protocols are available and can be scanned using nuclei templates and we see community members getting more and more creative with, with what they can do with these templates uh every day um requests the actual request being made what is the request you're sending out um and and uh what's required in order to make the template valid and work and then what matchers mean a positive result so let's say you send a request let's say it's like a um uh, an admin panel and you send a request with some uh and uh, some let's say it's a fuzzing template on an admin panel. You send some requests to the admin panel. It's fuzz, so you're trying a bunch of different things. What does success look like? Well, it's it's a 200 status code, and it's a new screen. And you check both of those matchers, and if that happens, success. So multiple matchers are, are usually better. You don't want a single matcher because... Uh, that can lead to a lot of false positives. And one of the good things about these community templates as well, and false positives, is that false positives tend to be uh, found quickly and addressed quickly because all it takes is one person in Discord or in GitHub going, hey, I got an FP on this. Uh, it looks like this status code also happens, blah, 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 or this matcher, blah, blah, blah. And other people go, yep, yep, yep. And so that can be fixed really quickly, you know? Um, way better than uh, the alternative, which is just one person has it happen and they're like, oh, well, that's a false button. They ignore it. Our community is really good about being like, boo, FP, you know, boo, the false positive. Uh, but what matchers mean a positive result? And the more matchers, the more sure we are that it's a positive result. Uh, section on variables. What are the input variables and what are you outputting as a variable so that you can use it in something else, right? Um, helper functions to manipulate the data. And then finally, uh, workflows lets you string templates together. Get the results of this template, pass it into this next template, pass it into this next template. You got a workflow. So let's look at an actual uh, template here. We got the ID up here. Uh, if it's a CVE, uh, it gets marked as the CVE. See, this one's from 2023. Uh, this is uh, a Hoda testimonial. Uh, looks like some uh, XSS here. Um, and if it's earlier than version 2.2.2. So that's the ID. Uh, this is the metadata info we talked about. You see it's got an author, a severity, quick description, and then some references. And this is why uh, the metadata is so important. You're putting references right there that are giving the user extra information so that they can check and see, well, what's going on? How does this uh, CVE work? What's the vulnerability? Um, how does it happen? Yada, yada, yada. So having these references is really important. Not having the references, uh, uh, you know, I would say always put them in because it's sort of like citing your work, you know, and making sure that the person using it knows that you did a good job. Uh, classification, uh, some metadata stuff. Then finally, the tags. You'll see it's got the CVE tag, the CVE 2023 tag, WordPress, WP, WP plugin, XSS, and authenticated. So let's say you are working on something else entirely and you want to run some nuclei templates against it, but you only want to check for cross-site scripting. Use that XSS tag, right? Filter your uh, templates by XSS. You only want WordPress, filter by WordPress. You only want 2023 CVEs, the most recent CVEs found, filter by CVE 2023, right? All this metadata, uh, this is this is what being organized is all about. And, and in my uh, limited understanding of bug bounty hunting and pen testing and security in general, uh, being organized is the most important thing you can be, right? Good notes, good references, good logs, all very important if you're not organized uh you're not you're not you're not doing great to be sure 
Finally, down here, we see it's an HTTP request. We're sending some raw data here, sending a post request. Sending uh, the content type, you see it's application with the form URL encoded. And then you see here, there's some username and password being passed in and inside those double brackets variables, right? So we send one post, we send another post. Ay, Dios mio, go back. Uh, and then we use some matchers and the DSL matches. We're looking for a status code of 200. We're looking that it contains uh, the header text HTML, that it contains in the body the alert script, and that it contains in the body the page Ahoda testimonials. And the condition down here, and all four of these got to be true. So we got four matchers here that have to be true in order to prove that this happened. And uh, this is... You know, I think I just picked a random recent template to put in here, uh, but this is the type of thing that you're looking for uh, in, in writing YAML templates. Uh, when we're talking about community templates, um, and of, of course you can find that at nux.gg nuclei-templates, uh, with our different tags, we have uh, 1,992 CVE tagged templates. Uh, you can see for panel, WordPress, exposure, cross-site scripting, OSINT, uh, tech, EDB. Like you can see that we, we have, this is just our most popular tags uh, in templates. You can see we take these CVE ones seriously. Um, when uh, log4j happened uh, back in, I think it was maybe, ooh, was that October, November? Uh, it was a huge deal. Everyone was freaking out. There were Nuclei templates available to see if you were susceptible and if you were uh, vulnerable uh, within 30 minutes. There were, I think, four uh, within the week different templates available. And they're all community made, right? Something comes out, a vulnerability gets exposed. Templates usually show up pretty quickly after, which is pretty cool. All right. Uh, like many things, Dash H, help is your friend. Uh, we're going to go through a few things that Nuclei Dash H uh, does, uh, d that gives you in order to, to do. Um, so Nuclei Dash H gives you, you know, new usage, Nuclei flags, but here's some of the flags you can use. Uh, to pick a target, it's Dash U, uh, and that's a single URL. If you've got a list, a text file with a couple of targets inside of it, uh, that's Dash L. Um, and then you're just putting the path to the file uh, uh, you know, like I said earlier, being an organized bug bounty hunter is important. So, um, knowing exactly that path to the file, which list you want, keeping all your lists well organized, um, or just running it directly from that folder, all totally fine. Um, resume scan, uh, when you, uh, uh, end a nuclei scan, when you cut one off short, uh, it creates a resume.cfg and you can resume with that, uh, command. Uh, and then uh, you can scan all the IPs. Uh, getting templates, you can run only the newest templates, latest releases, uh, things like that. There's more to Nuclei-H uh, later, uh, but again, we'll, we'll get into that later on. Uh, so we're actually going to get scanning now. And the, again, all of this is the part that, that Brendan did when we were in Vegas. So, um, uh, you know, be nice to me because it's my first day. Uh, so I am in... Uh, um, my, my little Kali instance that I have, I SSH'd in, um, and uh, let me pull up my notes so that I don't completely mess things up. Uh, we have a uh, website that we made that we know is vulnerable, um, and uh, that vulnerable website is going, is going to help us do this demo a little bit. So uh, we're again like Nuclei-H, and I'll go ahead and let's do this, right? Make it nice and big. Let's do a reset. Oh. Let's do nuclei dash H and let's make this a little bit bigger. And why do you keep doing this to me? Thanks. All right, now <laughs> nuclei dash H. Like I said, there's tons of options, tons of things you can do. Headless mode, we'll talk more about that later, but I did just wanna show that off real quick. Nuclei dash U gets us started. And we're gonna do not that full one that I did, but we're gonna go ahead and just regular scan um, and, and let's see what that brings up. So we're running a scan. And I hope like, again, I hope this is visible. Maybe I should do a little bit bigger. Yeah, nice and big, nice and big. All right. 
you can see it's already finding stuff information i had some fingerprinting you can see uh this is just like info 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 learning about what it has what's going on fave icon detected uh you can see default login hi oh no that's a it's a problem big problem uh but man a lot of this is just unnecessary and it's it's taking a long time uh you know medium all right like you see we've got two vulnerabilities that were like ah like that's that exists but all this info is really cluttering it up um we're gonna give it a second i know i know there's more here we're gonna let that run just a little longer some waft detect apache generic here being used on the site while this is running, uh, you'll see the new templates added in the latest release. We added 198 templates in the most recent release, uh, 2.9.12. Uh, sorry, in uh, 9.6.1 templates. Uh, you see there's 6,663 templates loaded for the current scan, uh, but one target, and they cluster them. It reduces the number of requests by 1,128 requests by clustering those templates uh, by, by similar. There we go critical that's bad this is bad um but you can see we finally started seeing some of these these issues here um uh let's go ahead and we're going to now run a couple of um we're going to run by tags so nuclei dash u and then we're going to go yep so we're going to filter by tags now only rce tags no info nothing else let's see what happens here so before we had uh, 6,663 templates, we now only have 445. Bam, there's that critical right there. CVE 2027-209, Web UI RCE critical. These are critical vulnerabilities here. And we got right to them. Look at all this stuff we had before. Information, missing security headers. All of that's critical. That's what we needed. We saw RCE, we wanted to check out that it was critical that's that's the issue here okay uh no no no. control c get me out of here all right so let's go ahead we're gonna run it one more time with another set of um options not the tags this time we're gonna do it by t and uh oh i'm gonna have to double check that i'm in the right folder for this um i think i might be in the wrong folder so i'm gonna have to find the path but t is for path let me go ahead and show you uh, dash H and when we're looking at what we're trying to do here filtering no 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 not templates yeah T list of template or template directory to run so you're picking just a single template directory to run let's go ahead and try that again nuclei dash U We're going to do T. I'm pretty sure I'm in the wrong folder for this. Um, it might give me an error. I know. There we are. Nailed it. Um, so you'll see this time there's only 576 templates loaded. Uh, we're doing this specifically by the HTTP technologies, and we're going to see what this pulls up. Um, but again, it still clusters those templates. One target. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna see what we get here. Um, but again, running it by specifically uh, a folder or a directory, uh, running it by tags, running it by uh, name and author, wh whatever it is that you wanna run by, it lets you sort of customize it. Um, while this is running, uh, let me go ahead and head back here and uh, we're gonna take a look at the uh, uh, Nuclei uh, GitHub page, uh, just so we can uh, be doing something here. Um, so generally, yeah, you can see that the templates top 10, who are top 10? Oh, top 10 tags, top 10 authors. Yeah, uh, DNS uh, has uh, 1000 plus templates that he wrote, uh, which is amazing. Um, just really cool. Like all the, all of these people writing templates, uh, Dwee, uh, amazing stuff. Um, you can see our contributions here, all the people helping us out. Oh, look, Brendan, suddenly Brendan. Um, but inside here, you can take a look inside these directories and you can see, oh, HTTP, what are we running right now? We're running the technologies folder. So this is what it's looking for. It's looking for 
VMware, it's looking for uh, AWS bucket services, it's looking for Kubernetes, it's checking these different things out right now. Uh, it's running this folder. Taking a look at some of the, where's the readme? This is the templates, just nuclei, bam. Looking at the options here, again, filtering by tags, by e-tags, by ID, uh, by severity, by um, uh, template condition string. Uh, and then your output, you can decide how you want it to output. If it's just to the screen, that's fine. But if you need it output to a file, um, if you need it in JSON-L, if you need to omit the raw data, um, if you want the timestamp, if you want no metadata in the CLI output, um, if you want silence, all of that, all of that. Um, different configurations, uh, there's a Nuclei configuration file. You can go in and mess around with it and change stuff. Um, you can tell it to follow redirects. It's so, uh, it's so customizable. I don't know all of what it can do. All right, let's see how we're doing. Speaking of doing. Well, it looks like it's hung a little bit there. That's fine. Uh, we've got that resume file. We'll move on for now. Just know that you can uh, uh, filter by uh, that folder. Uh, one of the things we did, um, and that makes uh, the Nuclei tools really useful, is uh, we follow the Linux philosophy of, of sharp tools that do individual things, but that work well together. Um, one of our tools is Subfinder. And Subfinder is a subdomain uh finding tool so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run subfinder and the command for that is d and earlier we were doing demo dot scan me dot sh so we're going to um pipe that into nuclei so we're gonna run subfinder on scan me dot sh we're gonna pipe it into nuclei we're gonna do the es tag for info and low so first it runs subfinder then it runs nuclei. Found two subdomains, right? Targets loaded, runs the, and it immediately loads those two targets it found. Tells us how many templates we got here. And it's running HTTPX on the input host first, and HTTPX is another one of our tools. But uh, yeah, finding subdomains is, is, a, is a really important part of uh, bug bounty hunting, because like, um, a lot of companies uh, have these various subdomains that they're using for contests or promotions or, you know, the seasonal situations, whatever it may be. Um, and uh, sometimes they just get lost to the sands of time. Like, where what happened to it, you know? Uh, it's a really helpful thing to, to have something like Subfinder. Um, and you can see it's already finding a medium uh, vulnerability there on demo.scanme. But uh, finding subdomains is, is really important because some of those subdomains get set up and let's say you forgot about this promotion you ran in 2018 and there was a subdomain for it. Well, the version of whatever technology you used to build it is vulnerable and it needs an update, but you're not updating that old subdomain. Well, it's just there. It's just kind of been forgotten about. That's now vulnerable. And if it's connected to any of your other, you know, uh, assets, there might be a way in, there might be some danger there. So, you know, running this, hey, reminder, we had that, you know, Thanksgiving themed version of our website that we made in 2018 that we forgot about and it hasn't been updated in forever and it's vulnerable. You can either take it down, you know, get rid of it, or you can patch it and update it and make sure that it's not vulnerable anymore. And that's the use of uh, a great use for uh, Subfinder. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this. Uh, gonna go ahead and exit out of the terminal and gonna go ahead and head back to the presentation itself so we can talk about, um, uh, you know, this is what we did. We covered that already. 
Uh, and we had a video backup just in case. Uh, but we'll go ahead and skip that and we'll talk about some of these options. So uh, when you do dash H, you can say, hey, nuclei dash H, just show me stuff for templates. Like I said, new templates, uh, automatic web scan. This is kind of cool. You can use Wappalyzer, uh, which as of yesterday is no longer open. So I'm not sure what happened. Uh, I don't want to, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden Wappalyzer was not on GitHub anymore. Anyway, um, automatic web scan uses Wappalyzer technology detection then picks the templates that are related to that technology only and runs the scan you can say hey you know these templates we did that in the directory uh you can do workflow urls to run um and validate the past templates nuclei you can use that to double check that they're they're all valid um and then you can list all the available templates which oh do you want a list of six thousand things um, you could filter by author tags. Uh, we earlier did ES exclude severity. We excluded uh, info and low severity. So we only got medium severity and higher. Uh, some configurations, like I said, follow redirects. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, custom header or cookie can be kind of important. Let's say you're doing a bug bounty uh, contract and you have to include a specific header or cookie in all of your requests so they know it's you. Dash capital H lets you do that. Uh, custom variables in key value format with a dash capital V. Uh, you can do passive mode. Um, and then uh, if you're fuzzing, you can do the attack type. You can battering ram, pitchfork, cluster bomb, uh, whatever your attack type is, uh, if you are doing the fuzz. Uh, rate limit, uh, as Brendan put it during the uh, the demo, uh, it's we should be nice to the people we're scanning. <laughs> So there's rate limit available and then headless. Uh, if you want to get into like the JavaScript um, um, stuff that the website's running, that's available as well. And then, like we said, fuzzing and then uncover um, enables the uncover engine and uncover is using Shodan and census and, and all these other um, great publicly available uh, um, uh, technologies to, to search and, and crawl the web. Um, you do need like uh, if you're using like you need the Shodan API or Census API you like you need the API key from these, but you just get them, put it in the config file, run uncover. Um, so for the templates repo, that's nux.gg slash templates takes you right to the nuclear templates repo. Uh, write your first template. This Nux link for writing dash templates uh, takes you to a video about how you can write your first nuclei template and how you can get started scanning. Uh, custom stuff for your particular needs. Um, just some numbers. Uh, over 6,400 we just saw. We actually have over 6,600 now. So this was two weeks ago. We added 198 in the most recent version. And we're now at 66, uh, 6,663, I think it was. Uh, in July, there were 44 million nuclei scans performed. And we have 70,000 community members and there are more than 6,000 on Discord. Last I checked on Discord is uh, 6,250. Uh, so if you want to come and be a part of a great community, uh, come do it. Uh, any questions? <laughs> and then we have a Tom Hanks gift because of course we do. Um, uh, I think uh, there was something else I talked about doing. So uh, we're going to talk about this, um, this template uh making page that we uh have done it's a template editor and uh it is uh templates.nuclei.sh and inside of it are you can view public templates by uh let's look at the headless and technologies uh let's do this extract urls so this is some headless stuff uh post message outgoing tracker prototype pollution DNS, Azure Takeover Detection. A subdomain takeover detector. Pretty, pretty cool. So check it out. Yeah, it looks like it was, uh, does it find all that? NX domain uses some regex for the uh, extractor. Uh, but inside of here, you can write your own templates too. You just have to have a login. Um, but additionally, I did login. Dang, hold on. All right, create a new template. Uh, we do have some AI, and one of the things you can do is you can um, paste like an article talking about a CVE, or um, 
Let me make sure that I posted this in the chat because I don't think I did yet. Yeah, there you go. Um, you can post like an article that talks about a CVE. You can do a CVE report and it will generate a, uh, uh, a template for you, which you can then check and double check and make sure it works and add to or subtract from. Uh, but it's a great way to get started. Um, and it can be really, really useful for people who are looking to uh, up their, their template writing game. So this is kind of a cool thing that's out right now. Um, um, last week, thank you for being here, for those of you who are here. Uh, thank you, those of you who are watching this on YouTube later. Thank you for that as well. And um, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. You've been listening to Vampire Stepdad, despite the fact that I couldn't get that to work down there for some reason. Um, I'm PJ Metz. Uh, today we learned all about nuclei ran through a demo on nuclei and uh i will see y'all next time uh hopefully next week see you later